day one working on the first gen. We're gonna start cutting around. What is up, loud and proud crowd? We are back here with the Project Cummins mud truck. Today's gonna be a little bit fun and a little bit um, uh, nerve wracking. We're gonna be cutting the front fenders on this truck. I ordered some brand new 35 by 1250 R16 mud tires for this truck and hopefully that helps with our bald tire um, mudding issue. Now, this truck does do fine, obviously, because it's four-wheel drive, but if you look at the tread on these, there's not much left. So I was actually kind of surprised we were able to, even though the mud wasn't deep necessarily, I was surprised we were able to get the traction that we even wore even when we laid into it. Like it, I mean, it grabbed and went pretty good, but I just wanted brand new mud terrains. That way we could go through a little bit more mud in 35s so that we could go through a little bit deeper mud and give us a little bit of added clearance. It's running 31s right now, 31s by like 10 and a half wide, um, but we're gonna do the 35 by 12 and a half wides. Now with these tires alone, this has stock suspension you have to keep in mind. So on a sharp turn, these, if you hit like a bump or something, turn it in the front, they will rub just a little tiny bit. But with the 35s, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this fender here and we're actually gonna cut it at an angle down to about here and we're gonna do the identical thing on the other side, that way that we can clear the mud tires. I'm actually gonna to try to leave this plastic on here, but I'm gonna cut out an angle to where it almost looks like it was meant to be left on there. Um, then we're gonna do it that way. So we're gonna see how that works. If it doesn't work, I'll just take the whole thing off. Um, but that's what we're gonna to try to do. Go down at an angle there, go down at an angle, basically from this little indentation there, down towards the front corner of this light, and out and we're gonna see if we can make the clearance necessary so that when we get the 35s in we can bolt them up and we don't have any problems rubbing at all. Okay so we're gonna try to mark with tape where we're gonna be making our cuts here with the metal grinder. Got the front fenders cut on this thing and uh, for the most part I think it'll clear the 35s I do need to bend in the I'm not done with bending the fenders in but we're looking at the main clearance which is you know this portion not that portion because I can adjust that but this portion there's actually about I want to say three and a half inches where the space front and uh, in the rear there's plenty I just need to cut those um, inner fenders back a little bit more I just ran out of uh, cutting wheel and then on the front, of course, as the wheel turns, you can see there's more room than you'll ever need. And then uh, in the rear, there's lots and lots of room. But like I said, those inner fenders, I'm gonna cut those more at an angle so that there's quite a bit of space back there. But I mean, there you go. It's pretty evenly cut on both sides. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a work in progress. It's gonna be fun though. So I'm actually trying to get a hold of my buddy, Jeshua, because he said he had to replace the starter on his truck. They haven't heard from him, but um, in terms of the purpose of cutting these flares again, these fenders again, well, let me just tell you, we cut the fenders to fit 35 inch aggressive mud terrain tires. So if you're gonna be fitting those tires on this truck and they're a little bit wider, they're, little, they're about four inches taller, we've gotta make space for them to fit. So I think this is gonna do the trick. I think we're gonna have enough room to clear those on the stock suspension. And like I said, guys, before anybody freaks out and goes, oh my gosh, why'd you cut your fenders? The truck needs new fenders anyways. If you look underneath that liner, I'm not gonna take it all the way off because um, it almost looks like it's, it's good to stay there with the other ones, but it's all rusted under there. I mean, that whole fender technically needs replaced. It's pretty corroded on the inside of the fender there too. As you can see, like in this, even in this wheel well liner, um, there's holes and it's just brittle. So, I mean, that's how the whole inside is. So yeah, there's overall, in terms of modifications to the body, that's most of what we're gonna be doing. We're still gonna try to cut a hole for an intake on this side. I'm thinking about putting the intake in right here. I'm not exactly sure how I wanna do it. I'm kinda of thinking about putting an intake pole right here so we can mount some PVC to that factory intake hose that comes right over to here on the inside. And this is just thin panel. There's nothing else behind here that I can cut like wiring harnesses or hoses or anything. And we can run that up, run it back over to here, 
and then just run that intake up in the air right here straight up and down and then uh put our filter up on top of that it'll look funny but it'll be working is this joshua foster joshua foster, joshua foster. so he's got his first gen here you guys should have seen the video of picking this thing up a long time ago <sighs> yeah and the old starter finally kicked the bucket huh kick the bucket I've never replaced the starter on anything <laughs> actually you would think like of all motors you would think the cummins motor is just super easy to work on more specifically a 12 valve right the 12 valve and yeah and it's just the starter like it's a 15 minute job normally well you have to like compile every extension that you have to make the longest one and try to squeeze <laughs> it in behind all these wires and the guy that i bought it from well or who he bought it from um had this big old uh what's it called i don't even know it's a huge hose coming out of the motor a blow by hose oh yeah and he had it pinned in between the starter and in front of that bolt so i had to get my i have this hot knife and the only way to get it out was to cut it off and pull it through so i had to do that but you got it hanging on there now right now it's so hanging. the most difficult part is hopefully done the hardest well the hardest part is feeding the last <laughs> bolt it took five minutes to pull all these other bolts off but then it's that that corner one is like this much space so the brand new starters in i've been missing this truck so bad because i've been driving that red chevy and it just guzzles the fuel and it's the same price as diesel and it's actually, time to haul a boat it's time to haul a boat <laughs> and the boat ramps are a little bit sketchy but this this thing definitely gets like super great mileage and i just love it like it's awesome but I think I'm getting rid of it because I gotta get a four wheel drive. I don't want to be slipping off into the water and then I'll have no value at all. So, so just to be clear though, when he yeah. says that his application is backing onto algae coated ramps, yeah. so he needs four wheel drive, yeah. but for the most part, a two, the two wheel drive I mean, like I've this day to ramps. day is not a problem. Right, but some of these lakes that we travel to, they're like five hours away and they're steep and they're just covered in algae and there's just no way, there's nothing you can do about it unless you have your front tires on dry pavement pulling you out. Yeah. So, you got starter in. Moment Let's of try truth. It. Yes! 5,500 OBO is what he's asking. It's got about 190,000 miles on it. Um, it's 99% rust free. The only rust on the entire truck is the rear driver's side bed fender, which is like a little teeny tiny bit. I'll show it to you right now. tiny strip right there that's the only rust on the entire truck yeah frame has literally not a speck body kind of anywhere else has that. yeah because he tried even, he tried to kill the rust off a little bit but wasn't enough even where they grip the body like parts of the body together you know those are usually the first things to go they saw factory paint on again these old persians are freaking cool so it is the next day and we're going to be taking some measurements really quick for our snorkel kit for this truck now i know you guys are probably thinking snorkel kit for the truck why do you need a snorkel kit it's a first gen dodge with a giant 12 valve it's not it's a heavy truck it's not a mud truck we're gonna make it we're gonna make it a little bit of a mud truck and uh, you guys just got to trust the process here so what we're actually going to do is we're going to actually be drilling a hole through this um, panel right here and before you guys say anything about don't put a hole in the panel if you guys see this i already cut all this away in your in the previous clips there and then this is all rotted out anyways it's all rotted rusty uh, if you look up in here you can just see all the rot that was up in the panel actually if it'll focus all up in there is pretty rusted and crusted I mean and this whole liner is just really rusty and bad and then behind here you can't really see it that well but behind the, all this molding here is all rusted um, so don't feel bad it would have needed a new panel anyways it was pretty darn shot um, it would have needed to have been all chopped up pretty much down here all this liner in the bottom half of that panel They're all chopped up anyways to be able to 
fix all that rust anyways, but that's not what the purpose of this build is. So we're gonna be measuring um, a measurement from here to here, and then also measurement from here to there so that we can take proper measurements. It's gonna be pretty funny. Hopefully it turns out pretty good. We'll see. The Longhorn, this might be one of the last times you guys see this truck, um, hopefully, because we're gonna be getting this thing traded in for a 2019 limited edition. So um, we're probably not gonna have this truck too much longer. Kind of bittersweet, I know, but to be honest, and to be fair, I am very excited to get the 2019. This truck has served me well. It's brought some cool content to the channel and we did the build series on it for a couple of weeks and then uh, it's been a really fun truck to drive. I've taken some trips in it and it's been it's been good. It's run awesome. Haven't had a single real hiccup with it in terms of something that you know went wrong. It's been a good truck. It's been solid, nothing to complain about. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that little um, cutting up of the fenders on that truck and then also getting to see Jeshua for a little bit for the first time in a long time in one of the videos. Um, and it uh, it was fun, it was, it was kind of, I was kind of cringing at first when I was cutting the fenders on those trucks. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is against everything I've ever wanted to do with the truck. In the same sense, I did buy that truck specifically for that purpose. I didn't buy it with any other intention. I bought it specifically to do what I'm doing to it right now. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. Stay tuned, we got some cool exciting videos coming up and that truck's gonna be getting sent into a mud pit very soon. So stay tuned, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to enter to win the white dually truck. That giveaway ends May 13th. Look at your calendars. It's not as far away as you think. Think. just hardly over two weeks or maybe two weeks by the time you see this video so do not miss out on your chance to take that truck home every $15 gets you another entry to win information is in the description below and if you don't know what truck I'm talking about if you go to the website link in description also the merch is on there and also pictures of the truck that you could be winning May 13th thank you guys so much I'll catch you in the next video peace